Got your scrolls, your iPads, your phones. Can you imagine back in the day when uh, they didn't have this book to walk around with? All these 66 books were not put together yet. They were made into scrolls and, and uh, you would have to go to a particular a sanctuary, tabernacle, a place where they would be. And, and then you'd have to commit as much as you could to memory. So here we read something out of the book of Hebrews. We believe the writer is Paul. And Paul, when, when you're reading it, and, and, I, and I lo- actually I love this the way it's written. But he says, but one in a certain place testified. In other words, somewhere it is written. I, I do that sometimes. I can't remember where it's written at. You, how many of you know that? You know verses, but you don't know where they're at. Amen. Amen. Mitchell, good to see you guys. It's Vicky. Amen. When, when a certain place, a certain place testified saying, What is man that you're mindful of him? Or the son of man that you'd visit him? You made him a little lower than the angels. You crowned him with glory. Did you know you were crowned with glory and honor? And you set him over the works of your hands. That's the earth. You put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all in subjection under him. He left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not yet all things are put under him. In other words, all things ain't just right yet. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. I heard what David said about poison oak and and about Jesus came anyway, even though he was going to get death. For it became him for whom all things and by whom are all things and bringing many sons into glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. In other words, the reason Jesus died was so that he could have lots of sons and daughters. Amen. There was a reason. He's the seed sown, if you would, into the earth. The question for me always comes up, why us? Why why would you do this for us, God? Why would you visit us? Because we have made such a mess of things. We've caused such a problem. So I go back to where he says in verse 1, in a certain place it is written, a certain place is testified. Where is that? Psalm chapter 8. Psalm chapter 8, verse 3. Are you comfortable? Mm Mm-hmm. You thought I'd let you get away with it. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, this is David talking. You know, David's that outdoorsman. You know, he's always outside. He's, taking, he's tending the sheep. He's, he's chasing lions and bears. Oh, my. He's always outside. He, he's just that guy. He's a, he's a uh, sling slinger, a man, a rock thrower. And he says, you know what? When I consider you heavens, when I look outside at all you do, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you ordained, you set them there. What is man? That you're mindful of him. The son of man that you visited him. For you have made him a little lower than the angels. You crowned him with glory and honor. You made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. And you put all things under his feet. Here's one of the things I'm excited about. First off, when Paul shares this message out of Hebrew, uh, in the book of Hebrews, he doesn't quote it specifically. Have you ever got in trouble quoting the Bible and somebody said, you didn't quote that right? You missed a word here, or you didn't use the King James, or you didn't use the NIV, or you didn't. Well, Paul didn't say the word dominion. He, he uses another word over it. So, but David says dominion over the works of your hands, and you put all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen, yea, and the beasts of the field, the fowl of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passes through the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. So David's prophesying about him visiting us. And then Paul says, yes, he did. And that's what Christmas is all about. Him visiting us. Him coming to earth and being a part of what's going on here. God made us for greatness. How many know we made a mess of it? 
Oh, we made a mess of it. And we're still making a mess of it. We blew our shot at immortality in the very beginning, of course, with Adam and Eve. And now the graveyards are filling up. But God's not finished with us yet. Verse 4 says in chapter 8 there, What is man you're mindful of him, the son of man, that you care for him? As if to say, why bother with people like us? You know, we, we ruined it in, in the Garden of Eden. Uh, we know what happened in Noah's time, how God had to flood the earth and Noah's uh, rescued. No one would blame God if he just started to start over again. And he did, when he gave you a chance to accept Jesus. Amen, we start over again. Father, I thank you for the word of God. I ask your anointing to be on my lips. Thank you for taking away the dizziness, Lord, and preparing us for this beautiful day. We love you in Jesus' name. Everyone shout. Amen. Amen. Those watching online, we thank you for tuning in. David's question comes to the very heart of Christmas. What is man that God should pay attention to us? You know, we pay attention to the baby in the, in the stable, but the bottom line was this was God paying attention to man, looking after who we are. So what is man that God should care about us after we failed, after we've, uh, whew, again, made a mess of things? Why should God care? Amen. Verse 4 says it. Uh, King James says, What is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him? Why should God care enough to visit people like us? And it's a point well taken. First off, I tell you that Jesus had to become like us in, a na- in, the, in his nature. That's the incarnation. That's what Bethlehem is. It's God becoming flesh. It's Emmanuel, God with us. That's the big word, incarnation. That's Bethlehem. Amen. He came into the world as a tiny baby, born in a stable in an obscure village, born in poverty, unwanted by the world. He was just another face in the crowd. No one seemed to care that he had arrived. But it was God's way of saying, I'm going to visit you. Amen. There sometimes I, uh, I visit people, I let them know I'm coming. Most of the time I don't. I just show up. Amen. And then you can get that, you can see it on their face, whether they're glad you showed up or, or wished you hadn't of. Amen. But just show up. The other night we were, we were out uh, bringing gifts out to friends and family. And we went to one family's house and, and we knocked on the door and knocked on the door. And, and, and finally uh, the, the young man in the house said, uh, I'm taking a bath. And I realized we'll just leave the gifts right here. Amen. We didn't, we didn't make the phone call. I can't wait to share that story in the next service because that's where he'll be. <laughs> Amen. So sometimes a visit can be a little uh, awkward, if you would, you know, when you don't make the call. And, and the scripture says that for 400 years he was, we knew he was coming. We just know when he was coming. Amen. When he would get here. So it seemed awkward that he would be born in a stable. But he had to visit us. John chapter 1 says in, in, in uh, chapter, uh, chapter 1 verse 14 says, so the word became human and made his home among us. This is what Christmas is. Amen. The word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. And we've seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. And that's what the scripture says, that he would be crowned with honor and glory. John testified about him when he shouted to the crowds, this is the one I was talking about when I said, someone is coming after me who is greater than I am, for he existed long before me. Now hold on, John. You're older than Jesus. But John had revelation that Jesus had always been. He wasn't just cuz. He wasn't just my cousin. Amen. He's king cuz. Amen. He's always been. Amen. I saw him coming. From his abundance, we have all received one gracious blessing after another. For the law was given through Moses, but God's unfailing love and faithfulness came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but the one and the only God, uh, Son is himself. God and is near to the Father's heart. He, is, he has revealed God to us. Let me read verse 18 again. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only Son is himself God. And is near to the Father's heart. There's that glorious mix-up. He was revealed God to us. He's revealed God to us. So in John's gospel, these last five verses, man, I mean, as he shared, they're, they're like a mighty finale of a musical composition played by some great sympathy orchestra. We hear the rolling of the drums, the crashing of the cymbals, the entire percussion section of the orchestra comes alive. The fingers of the harpist fly across the strings. The trumpets blast and the angels announce, amen. He's God to us. He's the incarnation. Amen. He's God wrapped in flesh. That's who he is. Hallelujah. And he came to be with with us. The word was the great condescension. I mentioned it, this uh, last year and it just welled up all over me. I love this thought. The word became flesh 
and took up residence among us. He hung out with us to condescend. Nobody likes condes uh, condescending people. If you do, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know about you. I don't like condescending preachers. I don't like condescending businessmen, employers. I don't like anybody that talks down to people. I don't like coaches that are condescending toward players. I don't like condescending. Uh, uh, you know, I took ballet for a little while, and I did not like to do No, I did not. Okay. All right. I, uh, you know, the, the bottom line is I don't like condescending. But here's God wrapping himself in flesh and coming down to the earth to connect with us. And getting on our level. Amen. To condescend means to lower oneself to a level not normally occupied. Physically, mentally, socially. It means to descend voluntarily to the level of another person. Now, there is a way to condescend without being condescending. Amen. There's, there are times that I will talk with people from Arkansas. I have to change just a little bit. I don't let them know that. Y'all follow me? Okay, I know. Some of y'all are from there. Okay, I apologize. I was going to say Mississippi, but. <laughs> and with human beings, it's not always done with kindness. Sometimes there's an air of contempt, snobbery, haughtiness, human condescension. But there is another side to the word. It also means to be gracious, willing to do something regarded as beneath one's dignity. I'll use another word, serving. There are times when we serve one another. You say, well, why are you taking my plate? Why are you bringing me that drink? Why are you doing that? To, to condescend simply means, look, I'm going to come down here on such a level. I want you to know I love you. Amen. And I'm going to serve you. And I'm going to bless you. And that's what Jesus did. Amen. He came to earth to graciously to do something beneath his dignity. What is it? What, what, this is what God did when he became flesh. It's that mystery. He performed the greatest act of condescension of time and eternity. The word John personified is the very expression and manifestation of God. The creative power of God was in the Word. With such limitless power, the Word of God condescended to be compressed into human flesh. John purposely used the word flesh. It's, it was a rude word to many of the philosophers and the theologians of the time. Flesh to them was corruptible. It was temporary. It was doomed to be destroyed, cast aside. No, God would deal with anything as regarded with flesh. Amen. Yet, yet, that is exactly what God did. He entered human flesh, which stands for the whole person in becoming flesh. God accepted the limitations of human, humanity. He became vulnerable to those natural human weaknesses that accompany our flesh. He got hungry. He got thirsty. He had was weary at times. Amen. He was in pain at times. He, he went to mountains to pray, to get away from such nonsense of, of people trying to make him king too early. He understood sorrow, hurt, loneliness, rejection. Because that Jesus had no sin. He had no sin in nature. He did this without the taint of sin. And yet the pressure on him to the point where he was sweating great drops of blood in the Garden of Gethsemane. Amen. When he felt the, when he said, my God, my God, let this pass away from me. Could this cup leave me all these things Jesus went through all this pressure had to do with him con condescending when he came to us at Christmas I think what a God what a God that he would be mindful of us that he would wrap himself in flesh and be a part that's literally what John said about Jesus he lived for a while among us he pitched his tent he cast his lot he moved in with us. He knocked on the door and we opened it up and said, come hang out with us. Jesus tasted death because that is our common destiny. Life is short. See, I, I'm not sure had Jesus not tasted death, what death would be like for us. Because the scripture said he took the sting away from it. That, that death has no victory no more. Therefore, when I know that somebody passes from this life, I have a funeral tomorrow. So when I think about somebody passing from this life who knew Christ, I have to believe in my heart that that pain that, that uh, before Jesus did what he did, amen, it would be totally different now. But Jesus could not have truly visited us if he had held himself back from the last enemy, amen. And that enemy, of course, was death. And he confronted death head on in order to fully become human. He tasted death, my friend. Jesus suffered, died, amen, rose again, amen. And by dying, he gave us life. The next thing I understand here is Jesus came to restore all that was lost in Eden. And here's the thing. Paul said in Hebrews that we were to be people that were over 
Uh, David said, take dominion over, that we are to be the glory and the honor of God. <sighs> Parents, you know at times your kids are not your glory. <laughs> Amen. They're your story, but they're not your glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, but, but, but there are times that they shine just a little bit, give us hope. Can I get an amen? Amen. Amen. So at present, the scripture says in chapter 2 of Hebrews, verse 8, at present we do not see everything subject to him. Not everything is subject, but it's going to be. I believe better days are coming, but they ain't here yet. Today we still weep over children who die too soon. We, we struggle with the virus that, that has taken people's lives. We understand that, that it, we're frustrated over somehow we come up with a vaccine in a few months to take care of this deadly virus. But we still over billions and billions and billions of dollars can't touch cancer. We struggle with all the nonsense that we see that's going on politically and even in, in our, our medical world and other places like that. We still see people starvation. Amen. So at present, we do not see everything subject to him. But the scripture talks about our glory. It is precisely at this point that Christmas speaks to us clearly. We were made for glory. Mm. But our glory faded. It just faded. I don't know what it was about us when we were young. My, my dad and mom both shook their head at me. Why do you want to wear them faded jeans, Joseph? Why would you buy something that's already faded? David, amen, why, why you do that? Because we would buy clothes and we would throw them in the washing machine over and over and over and over again till they got real faded. Then we would, we would take the hem out of the pant leg and fray it out and pull the thread out and get it, the bell bottoms really looking frazzly on the bottom. And we'd fade them out and we'd wash them. Off. Then we'd wear them to school. But if you'd have saw them in the beginning, oh, they were tight and right. Dark, um, blue, amen, the hem was good, but we done screwed everything up. Because we thought it looked better when it was faded and frazzled. And that's the way a lot of folk look now, faded and frazzled. Hallelujah. But God made us for something better than that. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. It says, well, so we were made for glory. Amen. But again, it faded. First we disobeyed. Then we started dying on the inside. Then we started dying on the outside. Then we turned to our own desires and we said, God, we don't need you at all. Leave us alone. Don't need you in our schools. Don't need you in our churches. We can do all this by ourselves. And we wonder why the world is the way it is. When you look in the mirror, you realize you met the enemy. He is us. And God said, I, I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm not going to let you destroy all yourself, each other, and the world I've made. I love you too much for that. Hallelujah. So he sent prophets. We killed him. He wrote letters. We ignored him. He sent us emails. No, he didn't. I just made that up. We mocked the God who made us. We broke his laws. We said he didn't. We didn't need him. And we made up our own gods that we like much better because they look so much like us. Oh, we made a mess of things. God had every reason to take us out. But he said, I love you too much to let you go. You're my creation. Amen. How, how could God visit us? This is Christmas. But he did. And he came to the world in a very strange way. He entered a virgin's womb and came out as a baby, born in Bethlehem. And a baby named Jesus, born to save us from our sins. This, my friend, is Christmas. When you gather around that tree, when you give out those gifts this week, when you think about Christmas and you sing songs and you drink that nasty eggnog, You snap out a little candy cane and you start sucking on a piece of that peppermint. I want you to realize that Christmas was all about him visiting us Amen. to right a world that had gone wrong. Amen. To wrap himself around us, to take death away from us. Amen. So we wouldn't taste the sting of that. To sit with us and realize that, you know what? Because he rose, one day we will rise too. Hallelujah. Amen. And he came to the world in a very strange way. How is he going to? He came through a virgin's womb. As a baby, born in Bethlehem, and his name shall be called Jesus. And he was born to save people from their sins. Amen. So he came as a baby. Grew up. Mm, what did we do? Killed him. Mocked him. Murdered him. Hung him on the cross. That's the thanks we're going to give you for visiting us. I'd hate to show up somebody's house and say, Pastor, <laughs> thank you. Bang. Jesus showed up great intentions. 
He grew wisdom, strength, stature. Preaching in the synagogue age 12. Quoting out of the book of Isaiah. Sharing the gospel with people. Bringing light into the world. John said this is, he was here long before I was baptizing. Voice from heaven said, this is my beloved son. I mean, God was screaming, this is me, this is me, this is me. And we still pushed him away. We took him all the way to the cross. Amen. And, and yeah, it killed him. C.S. Lewis said, the son of God became a man to enable men to become the sons of God. That's the good news of Christmas, my friend. Amen. And it's very true. I cannot prove to you everything that is, oh, you know, people want to argue this book all the time. But I can tell you, if this book was written to you, you know it's for you. Once you've, I used to read the Bible when I was a little boy. You know, we had them great big, I call them choke mule Bibles. That was, we did monsters that sat on the, t- and I'd go through them and they didn't make no sense to me. I, I didn't understand them. But when I got saved, I would read the book of John. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was God. Amen. And I I would go, oh man, that's deep. Then I'd read that Christ in you, the hope of glory. Oh, He's in me. That's deep. And and then the more I would read, the more it just became, that's to me. That love letter. This is a love letter, man. And it it just began to open my life up. It began to, to work on me. Christmas matters because it's true. So when, now when I go to Christmas and I think about what Jesus came, you would come to visit. What, who am I that you would visit me? Listen, if you get a visit from Jesus, you're important. Amen. Amen. You're valued. He cares about you. Hallelujah. When I visit people, you, know, I just, you can't visit everyone. And you can't hinge your life on whether you get a visit or not. But I can promise you this. He'll visit you. Amen. He'll show up at your place. Hallelujah. And the heart of the truth is that God did not leave us alone. But in our misery, He came to visit us. One dark night in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago. Christmas is all about who we are and who God is and how far God will go for us. I'm a parent that at times with my kids will sit back and say, just how far will you go for your kids? And I realize I have not found the end of the extension yet I still go as far as I can I keep pressing to I say that's enough I had it and then I realize what God did for me here I go a little bit further a little bit further and that's what he did so at Christmas we learn how much God loves us and there's nothing more important than that amen I'm going to read it to you out of the message Bible God brilliant Lord yours is a household name nursing infants gurgle courses about you toddlers shout the songs that drown out enemy talk and silence atheist babble I look up at your macro skies dark and enormous your handmade sky jewelry moon and stars mounted in their settings then I look at my micro self and wonder why do you bother with us why take a second look our way? Yet, we're, we've so narrowly missed being God's bright and Eden's dawn light. You put us in charge of your handcrafted world. Repeated to us your Genesis charge. You remember what the charge in Genesis? Take dominion over the earth. You repeat that charge to us. Made us lords of sheep and cattle, even animals out in the wild. Birds flying fish swimming well singing in the ocean deeps god brilliant lord your name echoes around the world my hope this christ come on amen my hope this christmas is that god's name will echo around the world amen and everyone understand and it bothers me that atheists agnostics Heathen alike, pagans, whatever you want to call it, will celebrate Christmas and they'll give gifts and they miss the whole point of Christmas. His presence is the gift that I want for this Christmas. 
His presence in my life, in my home, in our church. Father, in Jesus' name, your presence. There's none like you. In Jesus' name. Amen. None like you. Amen. I want, I want hands. Just lift your hands. You say, Pastor, I'm not Pentecostal. I didn't ask you that. Just lift your hands. Father, well, I'm asking for your presence to fill your people. I'm asking for your presence to go through this internet because we have to use it now in order to reach others. I ask your presence to go into the room. You say, with two or three gathered together, there you are. You are a gift to this house. You are an ever-abiding presence. You bring in such peace and joy. Healing comes with your name. God, I ask you, bless your people. Let us be extensions as we leave this place to touch this world that needs to hear a voice of joy. God, one of peace, one that understands that Jesus came to visit. Why? I, I, I may never know the answer to why you came, but evidently you love us like that. So we receive it in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, give God one more praise in you. I, I, when, I, when I first started studying the condescension, I realized as a young, uh, young boy I, from Alabama, there was condescension all the time. People talking down because of your education, aged, people talking down because you're born on the mountain, raised on the mountain, people talking down to you. And then it, and then it hit me when Jesus came to earth. You know, I, there's something about knowing that he would condescend and come down to my level. Talk to me. Walk this earth. Show me how to do it. I can serve a God like that. Amen. I can love a God like that. Hallelujah. Amen. You have envelopes in front of you. And if you'd like to give today, amen. Hopefully you will honor God with your tithe and offering. We're going to put some buckets up front. There'll be one in the back if you can't make it to the front. But I'd love to see folk bring that offering up to the Lord. Amen. It's a part... It's the way we honor him. You know, and I know this to be fact. Sometimes we need to give a gift. Sometimes we need to release. You know, and the scripture teaches over and over, give, give, give. And we understand that. Giving it shall be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, running over. I, as I move through into the, this year of 2021, I, I'm putting my economy in the kingdom of God. I'm not trusting in any 401ks. I know many have them, and that's fine. I have a little... Uh, a uh, nest egg we've been, we put up, you know, but I can't trust in that. I don't know what's going to happen with it, but I do know this. The kingdom has never failed. Amen. It keeps right on rolling. So I'm going I'm to trust God. I'm going to make sure my tithe gets there. I'm going to make sure my offering gets there. And then be kind to people this week. You know, somebody that, that may be alone, please reach out to them. You've been a great church for that. Amen. You reach toward people. You love people. You make phone calls. You send cards. You, you're kind. Don't stop that. That's, that's the hands of Christ reaching out. Amen. So make sure you keep doing that. Come on up, David. Y'all give David a hand as he comes. Yeah, you that way. He said he started itching. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then my son, you know, Josiah, oh, yeah. he looked like. Yeah, Josiah looked like he got in a fight with Rocky. Uh-huh. No, yeah, yeah. No, I look. I do look better. That's the thing. His son's face was real swollen. Um, so December 20th, Angel Tree Blessing. Give donations today for families of TLCC. Pastor will see to it that it goes towards families that uh, we've connected with or have contacted us. Uh, December 22nd and 29th, two or more uh, prayer group. Uh, drop prayers in the back of the church. Uh, Merry Christmas from all the prayer warriors who pray for you every Tuesday night. You want to say anything? Hey, you want to say anything about that? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, 
And, and there is something about whenever a, a church grows together, whenever they start praying for each other. You know, they say it about families too, a, church, a family that prays together stays together. You know, they're just cute sayings, but there's some truth to them. Um, and it's important that we continue to pray for one another. Uh, whether you can make it on Tuesday night or not, continue to pray for those that are in the household of faith. Amen. Uh, December 27th, uh, TLCC Family Skate Day. <clears throat> Sunday, December 27th, after church, ice skating in Valley Ranch, located next to the Hobby Lobby vendors. What's that? Oh, he just, yeah, yeah, they put it up every year in Valley Ranch. They put a little skating rink up, they enclose it. Yeah, yeah, it, it's big time over there, Sam, big time. You should see all the traffic to get there, it's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> it's incredible. Uh, so there's going to be activities, Santa visits, and more. Uh, for information, uh, visit www.emctx.com slash ice rink dash 2020. So, yeah, if you can remember all that, maybe it's on our uh, website. It would probably be a lot easier to go there and figure it out. Um, so January 10th, uh, there will be a swap meeting. You, you guys want to say anything about it? Just come and hang out with us. Just come and hang out. That's right. Um, and then, what's that? We don't care how old they are. Oh, yeah. He, they don't care. You don't have to be a, a super senior. You can just, <laughs> just want to come and hang out, have some good food and some good fellowship. And, uh, and you'll be able to hang out with the riches. They're fantastic. And she always cooks good, so that's good, too, you know. Uh, I don't know how Joseph uh, is, is continuing to stay skinny in, in the midst of, well, he's working on it. He really has been. He's doing fantastic. But uh, if I had a grandma like that, I would, you guys would never see me. I'd be rolling to church. <laughs> uh, I, I eat a lot. And if I had someone there feeding me all the time, God help us all. Uh, tomorrow night. <clears throat> Or on Tuesday night, sorry, Tuesday night when H and M are having prayer, we are going to have a youth uh, bonfire out in the back. Uh, bring your kids, your youth. Doesn't matter how old they are, we don't care. Just bring them. We'll hang out with them. Tell them a little bit about Jesus and what, wh again, why we do what we do. Like he said, the great condescension, the incarnation of Christ, the fact that Jesus Christ stepped out of heaven to be with us. That's what Christmas is about. And try to explain that to my JJ. Yeah, she doesn't get that. She's like, yeah, presents. Yeah, and it's Jesus' birthday, and I get presents, and it's Jesus, and I get presents. And I'm, yes, JJ, yes. So we just want to continue to instill into our young people that Christmas is about Jesus. It's about Jesus coming to the earth. It's not about presents. It's about the fact that God gave his one and only son. Amen. And so we're going to continue just to instill that into our youth and our young people and, and have a good time. Amen. Anything else? Huh? Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, Pastor did mention it, but I'll mention it again. Um, there is a play tonight. Uh, anybody know about the dinner? Is it, is it cost? I, donations. Okay. So donations, and it's going toward the art, right? It's all going toward the art. Come have uh, some spaghetti of both kinds. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, they informed me last week that there will be regular spaghetti as well. And, and I thought that was funny because I moved to Texas and y'all make spaghetti different than I made it in California. So, you know, it's cool. I don't know what regular spaghetti. I guess red spaghetti is regular spaghetti. And white spaghetti is what y'all do. Chicken spaghetti. It's delicious, though. I, I will say that. When I moved to Texas and the first time I had chicken spaghetti, I was like, oh, y'all done this right. This, a, this is good. <laughs> so... I hope you guys have an incredible week. Uh, hang out with as many people as you can. Enjoy the fact that we get to spend time with one another. Yeah, the world looks crazy, but imagine in another country. And that's what I told my wife the other day. I said, we still live in America. I mean, we still have the choice. If I want to go down the street, I can. I mean, it's crazy when you look at other countries. I mean, they're locking people down. We, we still have freedom, guys. And it may not be... Okay, thank you for saying that because it was not on my notes. So uh, there will be a, a lift meeting right after church. Um, are you going to be leading that? Oh, Miss Diane, right there. That one. Miss Diane Feeling? Feeling? Got it right? 
I want, hey, I, you never know. I could, I could get it wrong. I had to ask Miss Dana one time. I was like, is it still ranking? Did I get that right? I was like, uh, I don't know. And I don't want to embarrass people, you know. That's, that's one of the problems with public speaking is that happens, and then you feel like a jerk afterwards. So, you know, it happens. But uh, see, see Miss Diane, if you guys want anything to do with uh, the ladies, anything you want to say about it? Perfect. She, she wants to hang out with you guys. Ladies, uh, just come and hang out with each other. Again, this is, see, this is the best time of the year to hang out with each other. So we're believing that God's going to bless all of us, that this is going to be an overflow time, not just a, a, not enough time, but I'm believing that this church is going to be a blessed church. Amen? And as we give today, we're believing for jobs and better jobs. More money, less hours. Benefits, sales and commission. Checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off, settlements, inheritance, rebates and return, debts demolished, royalties received, favor and success to the kingdom. Love you guys. Get your kids. You guys have a Merry Christmas.